What is up, Green Bay Packers fans, and welcome back to another episode of Packer Report TV. I am your host and the publisher of that very website, Ross Uglum, and today we are talking about my three big takeaways uh, from Green Bay's win over the Tennessee Titans on the road. It was a big one, man. Obviously, the Packers moving to 2-0 and without starting quarterback Jordan Love, a little revenge uh, for former Titans offensive coordinator Matt LaFleur and certainly former Titans quarterback Malik Willis. The Titans investing, I do believe, a second-round pick in Malik Willis, ultimately uh, deciding to go with Will Levis. Malik might have been a third-round pick now that I think of it. Uh, but ultimately deciding to go with Will Levis and then also deciding not to uh, have Malik Willis be the second or the backup quarterback and shipping him off to Green Bay for a ham sandwich, for a bag of balls, for a jug machine, for a seventh round pick, whatever you want to call it. But once again, um, the Green Bay Packers are able to uh, get a win. And that's that's number one. Right. So of my, of my three things, number one is just simply mission accomplished. Uh, to to go one and one. I don't care that it was the Colts and the Titans, and it appears that maybe the Colts and the Titans are, aren't particularly good. Uh, the, the the fact is, you lose Jordan Love, especially you know go back to camp and we're watching Sean Clifford and we're watching Michael Pratt, and I like Michael Pratt and other people like Sean Clifford, but you know the, the conversation, of course, is well, either way, Sean Clifford or Michael Pratt, can you go two and two over a stretch of four games? with either player i don't know the answer to that it's all theoretical of course but we know the answer to that mark with malik willis because if he plays two more weeks the worst the packers could do is two and two with malik willis um i don't think that's going to happen mostly because i believe jordan love after two weeks of quote unquote almost playing this week of practicing all week i would guess that he will make his return uh, this Sunday against the rival Minnesota Vikings right there at Lambeau Field. But again, mission accomplished. And, and this one was, I think, particularly impressive. Um, not that the win over the Colts wasn't impressive. You know, I, I mentioned the guys over at the PFF podcast talking about that win being maybe the most impressive coaching job of the season. I'll take that even further um, against this Titans defense. I've mentioned before, I like DVOA better than total defense. I even like points per game better than total defense. I think um, Justice's uh, like weight adjusted A N Y A thing is is probably a better margin for defense even than than total defense. But total defense is just basically yards per game and has been the standard for forty years for you know the the top defense in the NFL. Well, going into that game, that was the Tennessee Titans, and one thing that that bore out. Um, although ultimately, you know, the rushing totals would say Jeffrey Simmons had ended up with egg on his face. I would guess what Jeffrey Simmons meant, meant when he said you can't run on the Tennessee Titans is you can't run between the tackles. And that was true. That was true in the red zone, disappointing red zone performance at times from the Packers. It was true trying to get Josh Jacobs going. But that's what makes this even more impressive to me. You were able to get Malik Willis going in the passing game to the degree that you were. Um, you were able to take real shots down the field to Dobbs, down the field to Watson. Christian played amazing uh, against Tennessee. And then getting the running game going on the edges, even probably by setting that edge running game up with some unsuccessful runs up the middle. Eventually, though, trying to bleed the game away, a couple of runs between the tackles were able to pop. Um, it's just not fun running at Ernest Jones, Jeffrey Simmons, and Tavondre Sweat. It just, it just isn't fun. Uh, but but the Packers able to get to the 30 mark, of course, that helped by a pick six by Jair Alexander. And that's that's my second big takeaway is that defense. Um, I think I saw somebody tweet out today and I, I'll mention it in my film piece that will come up shortly uh, after I record this today. I don't know as far as release, you know, which which one will, you'll see first. But I, I believe that someone tweeted out the Packers were 20th in success rate on defense. That makes sense to me. Um, even adjusted for the fact that defense is much harder to play now, I do believe that the Packers could be much better um, down to down and and just, you know, yardage wise, forcing third and longs, getting off the field, stuff like that. Um, play to play, I think they still look pretty average. 20th makes plenty of sense to me. What is making them a much above average defense, especially with the weight on their shoulders, with the offense having a backup QB, is splash plays and takeaways, man. The, the the way that they are turning the other team over, whether it was, you know, strip sack fumbles, Xavier McKinney with three picks in three straight games, um, Jair with a pick six, their ability to get sacks eight in this game, 
People were worried about the defense. People were worried about, oh my gosh, you know, are are uh, are they incapable? You know, are these guys that get paid all this money? Do they stink? Can we not rush the passer? Well, eight sacks, and I know that sacks aren't to be all end all, but there are plenty of pressures to go with those eight sacks. And anytime you get eight sacks in the game, that is a successful pass rush. And that's what I think you're going to see against the Vikings. Um, they have really, really good tackles, really, really poor on the interior of that offensive line. And they do have an immobile quarterback in Sam Darnold, very similar um, to Will Levis. Darnold easily playing at a higher level than Levis, no question. But Sam Darnold is not Jalen Hurts. Sam Darnold is not Anthony Richardson. And you saw what the Packers can do when they let the dogs loose. And then the dogs got loose and they got all over Will Levis. With that said, again, down to down, things could be better. Um, I don't know why the Titans ever went away from it, but they they were targeting they were targeting Green Bay's linebackers and finding a tremendous amount of success. I don't know why that part of their game plan stopped. Um, Quay was awful in coverage. McDuffie got beat for a touchdown. Um, you know, we we all know that that the the interior of, of Green Bay's pass defense is still questionable, especially on that first level. Nickel linebacker linebacker. Um, do you feel better about the second level of the middle of the field pass defense? Hell yeah, Xavier McKinney. Uh, uh, I'm trying to see Jonathan Bowler, Javon Bowler. Goodness gracious. Who's Jonathan Bowler? That's a defensive alignment. I'm losing my mind. Um, but you feel better about that level. Nickel linebacker, linebacker, you're not feeling great. Or linebacker, 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 you're not feeling great. The Titans came out with a plan to attack those guys. It worked. And then they went away from it. It's inexplicable. I don't understand why it happened. Um, even with the game script going the way it was where they had to throw, they being the Titans, I still would have thrown at Green Bay's linebackers. Didn't matter. And uh, I think Joe Barry, or excuse me, Jesus Crimey, I think Jeff Halfley um, did a good job of also altering the plan, uh, involving the linebackers more in the blitz game, a little bit in the spy game, and just have Edrin Cooper and Quay Walker go towards the quarterback, towards the football. I know you can't call a blitz on every down. I'm not an idiot, but I, figure it out, man. And they did. They, they went dime on some third downs, got linebackers off the field, got defensive backs on. Evan Williams, um, Corey Valentine, you know, they're, they're without Carrington Valentine, so even their dime group was a little bit thin, but I thought they did a great job. Third and finally, I tell you what, man, um, the sky is the limit for this offense, truly. They are relatively healthy right now. I don't know what, you know, Kraft, I hope that shoulder thing it doesn't nag him. Um, you know, you'd love to get Jordan Morgan back, but you see what they're able to do with Malik Willis, and you see the way that they're able to use – that with what you would cons you would sort of assume is a limited quarterback or something, you know, where you're a little bit less than comfortable having him do full full field progressions and having him really work the intermediate to the deep game, even though he hit some of those same shots that you would drop for Jordan Love. I think we're getting a way better version of Malik Willis than anybody anticipated. That credit needs to go to him, but it certainly needs to go to Clements and Lafleur. Um, I'd be impressed with Malik Willis if he had been with the Green Bay Packers all off season. Certainly beyond impressed with what I'm seeing now, both from a coach and player standpoint. But I tell you what, man, if you believe in what Jordan Love was over the second half of the season and you put Jordan Love in this offense with the creativity, their ability to run the football, and then you have Jordan Love throw to these four wide receivers and Musgrave and Kraft while teams are this worried about this productive of a run game, or you run this productive of a run game when teams are playing too high because they're worried about Christian Watson, Jaden Reed beating them deep, Bo Melton beating them deep. Folks, I mean, they just got to 30 against the Titans. They could really, really score once once the, the offense starts to cook again. I mean, they, they, they scored well against the, the Eagles in Brazil with Jordan Love. Not, not enough, obviously, but um, I think you could consistently see Green Bay in the 30s on offense. Uh, when Jordan Love is fully back and healthy. Once again, mission accomplished. Um, 2-0 and with Malik Willis. I believe Jordan Love's coming back. And even if it's not, even if you lose to the Vikings, 2-1 and one with Malik Willis would have been something that everybody signed up for. Folks, uh, if you like this lightweight tea, and I know you do, it's from Homage. Their link to buy uh, to help me out a little bit is right here in the video description or the podcast description. This thing is light. It is comfortable. It looks great. That throwback look with the, the 90s kind of styling. Um, I love everything over at Homage, and they've got some great Packers stuff coming out. Other than that, I am at Ross Uglum on Twitter. We are at Packer Report 66. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and go Pack Go.